Okay, so hello and welcome. My name is Rianne van der Linde and I'm a co-director and senior faculty member at the Shakti Shiva Academy. And today I have Valentina Leo on the line with me. Welcome Val. Hey, ciao. Hello. Hey. So Valentina is a dearly beloved friend and companion on an ever deepening and ever revealing unfolding journey of awakening here. And to, to introduce Val just very, very briefly, what can I say about her? That she's a tantric practitioner, an explorer of the tantric realms, uh, a teacher of enlightened sexuality, and that she was initiated into the embodied wisdom of human sexuality by Shakti Milan, the founder of the Shakti Shiva Academy. And yes, and the, the excellent news is that um, Valentina is going to be a guest teacher on our upcoming seven week mini course, Awakening Your Feminine Sexual Essence, where she'll be offering not one, but two bonus classes, which is really good news for us. And uh, so Val, the, the first practice that you're going to be sharing with us on the course is sky dancing. Yes. The dance of the bikini's breath. Yeah. Yes. So can you please speak to, to that and to give us just a glimpse into the essence of this tantric practice? So I want to say that this is a practice that uh, got passed on to me by Shakti Malan and I think was the pearl of her teachings. For me, it was the one piece I really um, dropped into and kept as my personal practice for many, many years because I think it encompasses everything. And, and, and this when we recognize that traditional tantric practice are very simple and yet so complex in the content of, and in their revelation. And, uh, but they're easy to practice. There's no so much learning that needs to take place, but just the willingness to really meet yourself in the flesh and bones. And so sky dancing has got this polarity because it's called sky dancing, is the, the translation of Dakini. Um, from Tibetan, it means Dakini means sky dancer. It means she that has relinquished so much of her personal ego, her personal like and dislike, that she can become one with the dance of existence that moves through her body of woman. And in the tradition, the body of woman is called the body of love because it's how love looks like is the curvaceousness of reality, the undulation of sound waves. And, um, and the feminine represent uh, really the coming into form. And so sky dancing is this dance that teach women particularly to drop into their body first, their form, their uh, density the sexuality, the move into the muscle and into the bloodline and into everything that is real and tangible in the body. And from there, when we deeply enter, we can find the place of dissolution, where suddenly we dissolve our ego in I am this woman and I like this and this is my name and this is my age and this is my narrative and these are my problem, my wounds, my trauma. Yes, all of that is true. And as we enter it and we dance it as an experience, then we can also find that place where the personality gets dissolved and we dropped into the flow of the sky. The sky dances us. Existence begins to dance me. And so it's going to move me in the way she wants me to express into life. And so my narrative and my story and my personality, they don't dissolve. They're never going to dissolve, but they start to become an offering to what existence wants from me into this life expression. And so we turn it around instead of being attached or fearful of wanting to heal and transform everything, we start to rest into who I really am right now, right here. And that becomes my offering to the temple of the Dakini, which is the wisdom woman, to use my life 
as a groundwork for wisdom in my daily expression. And then this practice will affect the way you relate to your work, your beloved, your intimate relationship, your public relationship, your um, parenting relating, everything, the way you relate with your garden, with the weather. And um, so it's, it's a beautiful, beautiful practice and yet very simple. It's just a journey into the body where we learn to really relax and recognize what's vibrate, what move, what is stuck. And we use the breath. That's why I call it the Dakini breath. Because in reality, there is only the breath here. You know, my body is an expression of my breath. And breath is sensual, you know. When we acknowledge that we need to breathe, we acknowledge we are a sexual being on this planet. And we just acknowledge that. We don't have to push it. We don't have to overdo it. We don't have to become multi-orgasmic. We just recognize that this is the way we relate with reality. And then the breath will guide this lighten movement. Mm -hmm. And naturally, sexual fire, so sky dancing start at the seat of my being where sexuality is in the second chakra. And when I really relax, the fire, the sexual fire will move naturally upward. So we have this movement going up towards the sky. So there is this movement from the earthly embodiment into the sky. And, uh, and then I think the rest is the one that are gonna come and sit with me. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah. find out more. <laughs> My body's responding as you speak to yes, I see. <laughs> invitation. Yeah. Hmm. And we've had um, many, many <clears throat> beautiful sky dancing practices. What I love about it is the it's such a feminine meditation practice, such an embodied practice, and it really hmm. is a teacher, a, a hmm. practice that teaches women yeah. particularly yeah. especially yes because they really teach us to embrace our eroticism as a spiritual practice you know it really yeah. teaches us about spiritual exactly. eroticism so the yoni is where we begin it's where we sit on and so it's the portal that connect the the earth and the heaven and especially for women because we the yoni is an opening it's so easy to relate to this channel of energy because we really open to the earth and so we will use the body form to to, to understand this invisible movement the, the breast is the expression of the feminine heart and these are our organ of penetration into the world so the yoni is internal but the breasts are external and so also how do we want to nurture this world because i feel this yeah. is a Possibility. It's not that we have to as women, but um, it's it's an opportunity. How do we want to nourish the world and our relationship around us? And so to start to understand how the breast is an expression of our heart love and, and not mm. an organ of aggression uh, or protection mm. or an armoring. You know, sometimes we use the breast to attack to manipulate our sexuality and the breast can become a very aggressive tool to move into the world for some women that are which are tender they want to protect and so we also break through yeah. this uh, desire to protect and take on the challenge of break open let the heart break open and offer that to oh. through the feminine embodiment and nourish with our vulnerability Mm. 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 so that's fantastic because that's the first practice that we're going to have a whole bonus call to to devote to and that you're going to share with us and then on on our second bonus call you'll you'll share with us a, another exquisitely fine practice which um is the yoga of mystical union with the vast emptiness of space and yeah. i know it's a really traditional mystical dance that is called Tandava and yeah. one of the things I've so enjoyed doing with you practicing with you when we're on retreat together and I'm hoping that you're able to in this time we've got together now give us just a tiny taste of this ancient form of yoga 
Yes, yeah, I mean, the, the Tandava is almost like um, what it's development of the sky dancing practice. So I think they position very well in the course that at the beginning we'll work with the body and our embodied sexuality. And then at the end, once we're able to really enter it, not to deny it, not to avoid it or transcend it, but through entering the body, then we can start to have a taste of very refined sexuality, which is um, becomes really subtle in the expression of our humanity um, in relationship to reality. And so then the erotic experience become the experience of the sensing, the, my senses and the space around me. And so the wind, my relationship with the wind can become an erotic stimulus. Looking at the sky at night can become um, an erotic event, uh, a romance. And so the body starts expanding into the vast cosmic emptiness, into the cosmic body of reality. And so we let go of our limited embodiment, but we are able to really drop into the recognition that the whole universe is my embodiment. It is me, basically. And this is a very powerful teaching. I think it's key to all tantric teaching to really understand as a felt experience that the universe, it's all my doing. This universe, it's all me. Although sometimes I don't um, mm. think it like that. It's this constant polarity of the universe forgetting its true nature and becoming is in limited expression as me. And so in the Tantava, we're having a physical experience of what that really means. When I practice the Tantava, it's very slow, undulating dance. The slower, the better. The slower we go, the more we get in touch with timelessness. And so seem like infinity, eternity, boundless freedom, eternal joy, um, shimmering darkness, all these uh, words that stretch the mind into biggest concept. In the Tandava, they get uh, felt in the body. And once we feel this knowing, that's it. We have it. It's, uh, it's, 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 our, it's our thing. No one can ever take this away. And this is how we define Tantra. Tantra is knowing who you are, not because someone tells you, but because you are having an embodied experience of what was spoken. And once it's in the membrane of the body, it's a reminder of who we are. And, and I, I played with this word really nicely in my last retreat. It came to me, the reminder, it's reminding, is bringing the cosmic mind in my physical knowing. And, and the cosmic mind, it's beyond my thinking mind. If I try to put it in my brain, it will explode. But then we have a body. We can put it in the body and the body learns much faster than the brain. And the body will hold this knowing. And slowly, the heart will inform the thinking brain of cosmic mind, of true mind. True mind is the mind that knows everything, it doesn't have to think it. And we all have this memory inside. And so Tandava and sky dancing are practice of remembering. There is nothing I'm really teaching new. I'm taking away the confusion that is in the space between me and, and cosmic mind. And, and for it always is an experience for me and with my student, there is an experience of remembering. Everybody knows this. You know, the student that practice this, they will tell me, oh, wow, I know this. I've always done like this, this as a child by myself, but I couldn't know it was something, I couldn't name it. And, um, and now we have a confidence oh. so we can own the natural uh, positioning of the body towards reality. It's a spontaneous dance. And so it's nice when we practice together that we all come back to what we already know. It's really beautiful. It's, it's always so enriching for me. I'm really looking forward to share these dances 
with you and this group that is forming beautifully. Mm, thank you. It feels like um, I'm, I'm touching into the spaciousness in my own body as we share and as we speak together. And yeah. I'm just realizing how the, the reminder is just so important and so beautiful all the time, you know, the reminder yeah. to drop back into the infinite space of the body and to move from that ground of, of being. Hmm. Yeah. Oh, so infinite gratitude to you, Val. <laughs> Blessings. Yeah, and, and also to, to Shakti, to Shakti, yeah. who, who really, she really shared the essence of reality with both of us. And I yeah. know that you are too eternally grateful for her being in her beautiful and, body. Yeah, and I want to say that when I met practice like the Tandava, when I went into the finest teaching of Tantrism, I, I was immediately there. I could get it because I knew that with Shakti I've done the work with my sexuality. I've worked through all my fear, the deepest fear that are entrenched with sexuality. And then I felt free, then my heart was ready to receive the teaching with no, no more entanglement and false through an illusion of romanticism. And so for that, I mean, gratitude, it's almost like a, a small word. You know, it's really, I'm really speechless. And I feel it's a true transmission. So I'm really honored to, to share this piece now into within our legacy of teaching because the sky dancing is really important to begin with and to keep moving in the body. And the Tandava come after, but if you don't have this peace that begins in the second chakra, the sense of belonging, the sense of tribe, you know, belonging to myself. That's what I learned from Shakti. Be the first member of my tribe, you know, belong to me. And then everything unfolds from there. So yeah, mm. blessing to dear beloved Shakti. <laughs> And so, as you, as you say, it's like that important piece of setting the foundation of doing our own work. And, and when I say work, I, I mean, it's not really work at all. Much of it is actually just falling more and more deeply in love with myself. And so to, to women who are listening, um, the invitation is if you feel the impulse in your being to, to doing this work of sexual awakening, then you're invited to join us on our our upcoming course, Awakening Your, Your Feminine Sexual Essence, mm. which is starting very soon in May. And um, all the details and all the information can be found on the links below. And so again, once again, well, thank you for your time. And we look forward to connecting really deeply with you on the course. Soon, soon. Soon, soon, yeah. We look really forward to having you join us. Yeah. I'm so excited. I'll see you soon. Thank you for having me. Mm -hmm.